Today, everybody, we move on to Matthew 5, verses 33 to 37. There we read this. Again, you've heard that it was said to people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. These are actually quite tricky verses for us to fully understand. And in the few minutes we have, I hope that we can do that together. But here's what the key point for us to take away is. Oaths really should not be necessary for people who are Christians because we are honest and we're trustworthy. Now, these are interesting verses because they take a bit of a, a while to get to the bottom of and really understand, but also because there are some people who have taken these verses to mean that they should never make an oath. There are people who, based on these verses, would not take an oath in court. They would not take any oath of allegiance. But Jesus isn't actually saying that here. For example, Paul himself, who would surely have known these words, in his own teaching at times calls upon God as his witness. He is as such invoking the name of the Lord. God himself, in Hebrews 6, verse 17, because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear, what he promised, confirmed it with an oath. The Old Testament permitted people to make oaths even in God's name, but it does forbid false oaths or irreverent oaths. And so the problem was, by the time we get to the New Testament, the Jews had twisted this Old Testament meaning. And so once again, Jesus begins by saying, you have heard it said. Essentially, what the Pharisees and the other Jewish leaders had done was make rules about when an oath was binding and when it was not. So, if it included the name of the Lord, then it was binding, but otherwise it was not. So essentially, there were oaths you could make and then break without any problem. Can you see how twisted that is from what the Old Testament would actually teach us? The Pharisees would say, just follow these codes, follow these rules, and then you will know how to make an oath. We actually get a little bit of a picture of that where Jesus again speaks later on in the book of Matthew, chapter 23. He says, woe to you blind guides. You see, if anyone swears by the temple, it means nothing. But if anyone who swears by the gold of the temple is bound by that oath, you blind fools. And so on it goes. You can read it there for yourself. Essentially, what they are saying then is if you swear by the temple, well, that means nothing. As in, you can break that one if you want. But if you swear by the gold of the temple, well, actually, you would be bound by that. Jesus says, you fools. It helps us better understand what he's saying in today's verses. And therefore, Jesus says, don't make oaths at all. In our verses, in verses 33 to 37 of chapter 5, he says, don't make oaths by heaven or by earth or by Jerusalem. In saying that, it would seem to suggest that the Pharisees would say, you could swear by these things. And then if you break that, it wouldn't matter. But Jesus is saying, Earth is God's footstool, heaven is his throne, city is the, Jerusalem is the city of God. Jesus is saying basically there is nothing you can swear by that in one way or another does not relate to God. You can't even swear by your head because you can't even change one hair on it from white to black, from black to white. You can't do it, but God can. And so in fact, God stands behind everything. So Jesus says, no oath is trivial. No oath could be made which allows you to justify not keeping it. So Jesus says, don't make oaths. Very simply, Jesus says, let your yes and no mean just exactly that. He's saying, be honest. Be truthful. Be trustworthy. When you say yes, let it mean yes. When you say no, let it mean no. Perhaps when you were younger, you might have made an oath. Oh, I swear to God, 
you might hear someone say, or how about, I swear on my mother's grave, or I cross my heart and hope to die. That's another kind of oath that you might hear people say. They're kind of playground oaths, really. But why do people make them? Well, essentially, it's because their word alone cannot be trusted. You need to induce people by adding these oaths so that it might prove their genuineness. To this, Jesus is saying here, if you're honest, you don't need to resort to oaths. For us to need to swear or make an oath likely reveals just quite how dishonest we are. Jesus says, let what you say simply be yes or no. In the book of James, he says that, and he kind of retells this verse, doesn't he? He says, let your yes be yes and your no, no. Can I say today, this is really important. Here's why. We claim to have the truth, the gospel, the good news. And we follow him who is the truth. We must therefore be truthful people. We should not need to try and induce people swear by anyone or anything. Our word should count for something. If we say we'll be somewhere at a certain time, we should be there. If we say we'll pray for someone, we should do it. We shouldn't just say it as the right thing to say. We must keep our promises. We must be people of our word. How many of us tell stories or exaggerate the point to make it sound better or make our point more clearly? But in doing that, what does that then present, especially to the unbeliever when we come and tell them Jesus is the saviour of the world can you really be trusted are you really telling the truth so what Jesus says to us this morning is really very important yeah let us then be honest and trustworthy people in all that we say and do let me pray Lord once we get through and break into the understanding of these verses, Lord, we realise you're calling us to be honest, to be trustworthy. We do believe that we fully do have the truth and that you are the truth, the way, the truth and the life. And we want to offer that truth to people. So Lord, how can we offer truth if we ourselves are not truthful, honest, genuine, trustworthy people? Lord, it is a real challenge and we need to hear ourselves speak today I pray that you'll help us to discern our language in such a way as to hear whether or not we're bending the truth, whether what we're saying is true, trustworthy. Help us, we pray, to be the people again you're calling us to be now and every day. In Jesus' name we pray.